Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. So in this video, we want to focus on the while loop in Python. And, and while is very similar to the for, but it gives you a little bit more control on how many things you want to loop through and stuff like that. Because we saw that we can have a little bit more control with the range where we can give a starting and end point in the range, but sometimes you don't know when the start and end point is. And it's all dynamic and it's all dependent upon the data that you're evaluating. And that data is never predictable, especially if you want to have a smart program like Google or something else. So you need some greater way of being able to say, you know what, do something while this condition exists. And then once that condition no longer exists and the sun stops shining and it turns into a, a red dwarf or something and it starts sucking in planets, go ahead and stop what you're doing and we're going to do something else and hopefully get off this planet and out of the solar system and, and move on. But short of that, just continue to do what you do. So let's look at the while loop and we're just going to look at the continued my list, which is just 10 numbers and we're going to while loop through it. And we're going to say while, um, you know, in fact, we'll even have, you know, we're going to have a little index number. So we're going to say go until this number. And this is just a big, long drawn out variable name. And we're going to say five. So that's our magic variable that says, hey, when this condition, until this condition exists, go ahead and um, and do what you're going to do. In fact, we can even have, uh, we can, and what we're going to need actually to have another number that actually says where to start. Because if this is the condition that says, hey, this is where we should end, then you probably won't even know about that. In fact, a better way to do this is probably going to be just say start number and we're going to say equals one because what I can do, I can then say while um, start number is less than, um, well, I guess we can just say five. We'll just say five for now. Then I can say print my list and then I'm going to say start number. So I'm actually passing in the start number into the list. And we've seen that my list is just a list. So if I passed in, um, you know, one or something like that, in fact, we can even start at zero. We'll start at zero. So this number is going to be dynamically updated. But how do we update this here? Because let me show you how we can get into a problem where we go into a continuous loop. And this is where it goes on forever. We have start number here at zero. And we're saying while start number is less than five, which it always will be less than five because it's zero, it's going to continue to say print my list start number. So when you first start out in programming, you're going to write these infinite loops and it happens. And you don't know why, but the more you think about it, the more it'll eventually make sense. But here's start number at zero. It's less than five. So we're saying print my list start number zero, which is it's going to print one down here in the debug console. All right, and we do it again and again, and it goes on forever and ever and ever. You can see it's printing out one. Why? It's because start number is always zero, and it's always less than five. So it's constantly printing the same stuff, and, and we typically don't want that. Let's go ahead and stop the program so we can get out of this infinite loop. What we need to do is say, you know what? Start number needs to be incremented every time we evaluate. So we need to say um, start number plus equals one. And this is a shorthand way of basically saying, you know what, start number is going to equal itself plus one. So in this uh, shorthand way, let's go ahead and now look at what's going on. Start number is zero, like it was before, it's less than five, so it's printing that number. Now what, what happens when we say start number now start number equals one, so we've incremented it by one. And now when we print this start number, it's now two. So if we keep doing this, eventually it's going to snap out of the list as soon as um, start number is greater than five. Four, five. And then you could see that we jumped out of the loop because start number eventually became greater than five, so this uh, this statement never equated. Now, in this example, we didn't really need to use my list. My list could have been just a series of fruits and all this other stuff, or uh, in this case, it was just a, a, a bunch of numbers, but this particular way of using a while loop, you know, while some condition exists, do this. The The problem is, though, is that if you're looping through something, you, you have to 
you have to increment. You have to have some sort of counter that says do something for this period of time. Because if I had, if I wanted this thing to run forever, I could just simply say while x, um, or I could even say while zero not equal one. And we're going to get into not equals in just a second. But this is going to be a a situation where it runs forever, and we can say print hello world. And if we run this, zero never equals one. So it's constantly going to print. So if I keep pressing F10, 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 you can see we have this infinite loop. So if you ever wanted a program that runs continuously, you could just have a while statement that doesn't equal each other and never equals each other and the program will continue running forever. In fact, that's a simple way that programs continue to run. The only problem is, is that they can eat up memory and things like that, depending on what you have those programs doing. And every once in a while, you do want it to just stop running because of some catastrophic error. But if you're running some sort of electric grid or something for a hospital, you're obviously going to have a while loop, continue to run your program and continue to have it doing uh, stuff and and try to gracefully handle errors along the way. But anyway, guys, that, that is a while statement in Python 3. Thank you guys for watching. Please share this video. Please subscribe. Please upvote if you would. And if you downvote, just let me know why you're downvoting. Thank you guys. Bye. Hey guys, so a lot of you ask me, how do I get my foot in the door to become a programmer? And I just want to take a moment to mention Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is a 12-week intensive course that focuses on the technologies of the here and now for web development. Uh, some of the things that they're actually teaching in this 12-week course, it's geared to get you into the, the industry by focusing on things like jQuery, Node.js, React, Angular, how to use GitHub. So a lot of the things that you're going to need to do as a developer, as soon as you start, they're going to be teaching you in this in this coding boot camp. And the entire goal is to be able to get you into the industry within 12 weeks. So if you guys are interested in learning more information about Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp, just check out the link in the description tab of this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day.